I've never been much of a party-goer. The whole thing just doesn't appeal to me. Especially those held at houses. I mean, why would anyone open their house up to a bunch of people who are misbehaving at best and complete strangers at worst? No, 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 the whole thing has never appealed to me in the slightest. When I did used to go to parties in my youth, I used to find a quiet spot in the corner and observe human behaviour. Of course, the scariest thing was when I saw someone doing exactly the same thing as me. I thought that kind of weirdness was limited to me alone, but apparently not. Well, my dear friends, the Halloween feast continues, so it's time to sit back and relax with your favourite drink and listen. I'm not much of a party person. When I was in high school, I pictured myself going to frat parties and <laughs> hooking up with guys, or something along the lines of that. Anyways, that's obviously not what happened. I studied biomedical engineering at my university, which I'm not going to reveal the name of for privacy, and I'm much more of a homebody. However, me and my friend Derek occasionally go to parties and well, we play a silly game. In this game we play, we snoop around the frat, the sorority house, and try and find the most blackmail-worthy thing. Whoever finds the best, or worst, however you put it, well, whoever finds that item wins. This probably makes me sound like some snoopy, deranged psychopath. But, well, if it makes you feel any better, we usually return the evidence. But this time, I found something I regret finding. This time, we were at the Alpha Epsilon Pi House, at their annual welcoming party, or what Derek and I like to call the Let's Haze the Freshman Party. I remember rummaging around a few rooms and finding a worn-down baby blanket. In another, I found a weird magazine. Not anything like Playboy, something different. <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. Anyways... I stopped in front of another door and read the Stay Out sign plastered on the door. I shrugged and entered the room, or at least I tried. The door was locked, so I held my ear against the door. There were no intimate noises coming from the room. Now, usually if a room was locked, I wouldn't go in. If someone's door's locked, that obviously means they have something rather well, private in there, right? But curiosity got the best of me. A locked door and a stay out sign. Well, I couldn't resist. This is where my handy lockpick, which was just a bent bobby pin, came in handy. After a few minutes of jiggling the bobby pin in the lock, the lock clicked. This room was surely a gold mine. I began searching around the room, and I found nothing that incriminating until I started opening the dresser drawers. At first, I found the usual. Underwear, folded shirts and jeans. Until I opened the bottom right drawer. I found some zip ties, a pocket knife and a Polaroid camera. But the thing that caught most of my attention was the white shoebox with no brand name on the box, ominously placed in the corner of the drawer. Hmm, suspicious. I immediately grinned. Whatever was in this box was surely going to win the contest. What was in that box made me regret coming to this party and made me regret inventing this stupid game altogether. I vividly remember opening the box and finding Polaroid pictures of women and children. Their naked, ghostly figures were splayed across what looked like the grounds of the forest. The autumn leaves that covered the ground were bloodied, the bodies were bruised, and their faces, oh my god, their faces. Their faces were stuck in a look of horror, a look of helplessness. I immediately dropped the box out of my hands and yelped out. Everything looked so real. It was different from the movies. I thought, if I ever came across a body, I'd be somewhat unfazed by the gore, uh, due to the amount of horror movies I'd watched. But on that damn day, 
I was proven wrong. I felt all the alcohol I'd previously consumed threaten to release itself all over the carpeted bedroom. I began to sweat, and tears pricked at the corners of my eyes. I remember recovering from what I'd just seen in a few minutes. I needed to report this to the police. I tried to gather most of the Polaroids without getting a glimpse of them. I stuffed them in my pocket and proceeded to leave the magazine and baby blanket inside of the room, and I immediately shuffled down the stairs. I didn't bother to tell Derek where I was going. I could tell him what happened later. I stepped out of the room and left, not bothering to take a good look around. Someone immediately lashed their hand around my arm. I looked up. It was a guy around my age. He was tall, with deep-set eyes and curly black hair. He was wearing a blue Alpha Epsilon Pi shirt. I remember telling him that I probably wasn't his girlfriend or whoever he thought I was. That was, until he lowered his head to my ear and huskily whispered, You're a snoopy one, aren't you? In my ear. I immediately remember thinking, run. I pulled my arm away with all the might I had. It was no use. I couldn't get out of his grasp. I immediately started yelping out excuses as I tried to wriggle out of his grip. But he looked unfazed. He started to pull me into his room. I screamed and shouted as loudly as I could, but the loud noises of the pop music and cheering blurred my screams for help. He threw me to the ground and quickly opened the bottom drawer and got a zip tie out. He proceeded to sit on top of my wriggling body and grab my left wrist. This'll hurt less if you stay still, I remember him saying. He took my wrist and zip tied it to the leg of his bed. He got up and, before leaving the room, he grinned and said, I'll be back. After he closed the door, I immediately panicked. I'd seen tutorials on how to get out of a zip tie if both your hands are tied up, but I'd never seen one if your body was tied to something. I tried to squeeze my hands out of it, but it was no use. I looked around. The drawer which contained the pocket knife was still pulled out. If I could break the drawer out of the dresser, I could cut myself free. I immediately went to work kicking the bottom of the drawer as hard as I could. One wheel of the dresser came unhinged, but the other hadn't yet, and he would come back at any minute. I sat up, making the plastic dig into my wrist. I scooted towards the drawer as far as I could and leaned forward. I hissed loudly. The zip tie was cutting off my circulation. I couldn't reach it. I sat back and rested for a moment, before taking one deep breath and scooching towards the drawer in one quick movement. I grabbed onto the edge of the drawer and pulled it towards me as hard as I could. The drawer made a loud popping noise as it came off of its hinges. I took the pocket knife out of the drawer and cut the zip tie. I sighed in relief. Now. It was my turn to escape. I couldn't go out the front door of his room. I couldn't risk getting caught again. I looked at his window and stepped toward it. I opened and looked out. We were on the second floor of the house, but there was a part of the first floor that stuck out under the room. I started to cut the window screen hastily. I was about to climb out when the door opened again. A slew of curse words flowed through my brain all at once. I didn't even bother to look back. I climbed out of the window as fast as I could. My foot planted itself on the very top of the mini roof, or whatever you'd call it. Once I got both of my feet planted on the roof, I tried to climb down. The goddamn rain soiled my plans, and I slipped down the roof, falling onto the ground. My head was pounding at this point, and you can just guess who exited the building via the front door. 
I ran as fast as my body could manage, with my head pounding and my legs aching as much as they did. I ran into the wooded area, and my mind immediately went to the pictures I'd found just minutes before. Was I going to end up just like those poor people in those photos? The loud footsteps behind me only grew closer, and before I knew it, I'd been tackled to the ground. The man's curly hair hung in his face as he grinned widely. Was I going to be his next kill? He pressed his fingers into my neck. I don't usually strangle people, but I guess you're a good exception, he commented rather nonchalantly. I quickly lifted my leg up and kicked him in the crotch. He hissed, and his grip loosened. This was my chance. I wriggled him off of me and stood up, kicking him as hard as I could in his sides. He yelped in pain as I got on top of him and pressed my fingers to his neck, just as he'd done. Nothing was on my mind except the fact that I needed to press harder. I needed to kill this man. And I did. I screamed when I noticed he wasn't breathing anymore. I shook him. No. No, this couldn't be. I didn't kill him, did I? I started to weep when I noticed I had actually killed him for good. I didn't know what to do. So, I called Derek. He picked me up, along with the body. He freaked out, and he didn't stop when I told him the full story of what happened. What we ended up doing, after a lot of panicking, was driving to Home Depot and getting a cinder block along with some rope. The next day, Saturday, we drove to a lake a few hours away. In the wee hours of the morning, when no one would be awake, we tied the cinder block to the guy's ankles and dropped him into the lake. And that's the end. No one has found the body yet. A part of me doubts they ever will. Have the fish already eaten him up? And well, if they did, and found me guilty, would my crimes be justified? Probably not. I live in constant paranoia because of this. My hands are shaking as I type. I don't have anything else to say at this point. Thank you for reading my story, I guess. Well, in the words of Ron Burgundy, that certainly escalated quickly, didn't it? And a bit of a twist in the tail at the end there, too. What did you think of that one? One of my favourites from No Sleep in recent weeks. Really like the way that one went. Well, comments in the comment section below, as always. And as ever, I'll do my best to have a quick chat with as many of you as I can. But, under a lot of pressure this week. Six stories in six days. Only halfway there. Three more to go. So, please, join me again tomorrow, I know. Okay, but that's enough for me for one evening. So, sweet dreams and bye-bye. Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time listening to me. Now, if you enjoyed the Dr. Creepin experience, then come find me on Facebook. Come chat with me on Twitter. Listen to the background music and download it if you like on SoundCloud. Drop by the store, pick up a t-shirt. And, importantly, if you've got a story you'd like me to read, send it to Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so that I could read your stories. Now, Looking forward to seeing you all again real soon, so come check me out, okay?